Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Emil. Uh, I work at uh, Fishbrain as an iOS developer. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how we use uh, image recognition to improve our products. Uh, and at this time when we did this, there were no uh, core ML. So we went to use uh, uh, TensorFlow. Uh, but quickly, uh, so Fishbrain, we're a social media for uh, sports fishing. Um, yeah, basically, uh, this is somewhat what it looks like. Uh, an older version, but this is like the type of pictures our users are uploading, or they like holding a really big fish. Um, and those are the type of images that we are analyzing. Uh, but let's go back to where it all started. Um, we had this idea in May. We do this innovation week uh, every quarter, like where we get to work on something different, uh, and we really try to keep the, the roof really high. Um, so I had a colleague who's a data scientist who's like, I've done this before, like similar like analyzing pictures. It's like, yeah, okay, let's 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 try it, see if it works. Because um, it would be cool, right? Running around in the office and like taking pictures of uh, everyone's faces and see what type of fish they are. Um, but that's that's sort of where it ended. Um, so moving to May this year, uh, instead, um, we uh, we managed to uh, we were in like this um, uh, planning session. Uh, like what, what we're gonna do next. And this, while we were doing this, we were focusing a lot on our ad catch flow. So getting users to, uh, or like enhance that experience. Um, and we were like, yeah, but let's, let's try this out. Let, let's try to put it in, in production. Um, we knew that like what we've done before wasn't really gonna hold for, for like, uh, uh, it wasn't like gonna like be able to run in, in production or if on, on a production app. Uh, so we started doing some research. Uh, we found TensorFlow. It's a Google product. Anyone used it? And what it is? Uh, it's, um, it's developed by the Brain team. Um, and it's pretty extensive. It covers a lot of platforms, uh, including like Raspberry Pi, uh, Android, and also covers uh, support for uh, uh, iPhone. Um, so that's where we got started. Um, yeah, so it covers training. Uh, you can run it on their cloud services. Um, it has mobile support, uh, a lot of <laughs> research and examples. Um, and we thought we could be able to do the fish recognition and we also do the, the species recognition. Um, but there's no machine learning without data. Um, and we had like a really small set from like the first, first attempt, like the first week when we did this. Um, we figured we needed more. Um, yeah, we saw like our accuracy from that period uh, wasn't really good. Um, we had approximately like 200 images per category. So that covered 50 species, 10,000 images, I think. Um, and we have a lot more, I think. So, so like, how can we, oh, was it right? Yeah. Uh, so how can we get more like expert verified images? Um, we went to the, the one big source ourselves. Uh, we have, as I showed, a lot of fish pictures. Um, but the problem is like, how do we go through them? Um, uh, and the solution is called Nemo. Uh, Nemo is our whole project that that's, uh, is the fish recognition. One part of this is, uh, it's a small interface where you uh, select what you're looking for. You're looking for like a large mode bass. Uh, we take the uploaded images that we have that is already tagged, user append uh, the bass. Um, and then we go through them. So you're swiping through, is it a bass? Yes, no, yes, no. Uh, it looks very similar to, uh, there's a dating app that uses the same interface. Um, somewhat inspired. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we managed to get uh, 20,000 images in, in just two days uh, doing this. Uh, we had colleagues sitting at home and so far like swiping ref left, right, rejecting images or uh, approving. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so that was the data. Like that was two days. We uh, we actually like continued doing this for several days. Uh, so we ended up close to hundred thousand pictures, I think, that we uh, that we've been through. Um, so that's the data part. Uh, now to training the model. Um, there is with like when you get started with TensorFlow, there is the inception uh, model. Uh, there is also a smaller one that is the mobile net. Both are uh, trained on the ImageNet library. Um, 
Well, we decided to, uh, to build our own model from scratch using TensorFlow Slim. There are several, like, so TensorFlow Slim, Slim is a high level library for uh, uh, defining uh, models in TensorFlow. Uh, there are several ones, uh, but we went with uh, Slim. And as I said, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, APIs that you can use on top of this. Um, and we, uh, yeah, so on this like, first model, uh, we got some pretty nice results. Uh, this is far better than we had the first time we did this. So uh, the uh, evaluation on the top 30 species is uh, that the first one, 76% that is among the, yeah, that is the top species that we suggest. 92% um, on the top three and 95 on the top five. So that was, that was really good. Um, I'll get back to this later. Um, yeah, so we have the data, we have the model, now running it on the device. Uh, this is where uh, uh, my head started for, for real. Um, the, the library is actually 450 megabytes. Moving this around is pretty heavy. Um, so uh, put it in one place and then change the path if you're, uh, uh, anyway. And this also takes, so my colleague who is doing the training can actually run this on an instance. Uh, you have to build, or create the library on, uh, uh, on a Mac, or at least on an OS X. Um, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll build it on my machine. Uh, it took two or approximately three hours on my, at that time, my MacBook. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, uh, put it up like a separate instance for my training, or like building my libraries. Um, so this, yes, this is us. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, so it actually takes some more time because you can configure like some um, compile flags to uh, like, to actually also match your model. Um, so you might have to do that a few more times uh, depending like uh, your settings. Um, yeah, and, uh, but it, it's pretty straightforward like when it comes to code wise, uh, there are extensive examples. Uh, it requires some uh, C++, but it's fairly basic. You can uh, look at the examples. Um, another problem before like going uh, live is that we reached the uh, 100 megabyte limit. Um, that's a bit scary at first, uh, like going live with all this, um, like the app, uh, the model, and then um, the library on top of that. Um, so we were like working closely with the growth team, like it's looking at the acquisition numbers, uh, but it was, it was actually really fine. Um, so yeah, we have the data, we have the model, we have the implementation, went live running this in production. Uh, we've been running it since. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a nice uh, wow factor in the app where we get to use, uh, I don't, sorry, I don't have a photo. Uh, but where the user is, it only takes a matter of milliseconds. Uh, and we show the percentages uh, on the probability. Um, uh, yeah, so what's, what's next? So what's new since, since, since May? Uh, core ML happened, uh, which I'm actually really excited about. Uh, unfortunately, like um, time is sparse, so we haven't really got any opportunity to to play around with it. Uh, but what is necessary for now and is basically get our model to, um, to fit into to uh, core ML. Uh, so that's like where the major part is. Uh, like the code is is not really that much. Like the the C plus plus that we had to code is two hundred lines of code, I think, uh, where most of it is already like. Uh, some of um, uh, Google's. Uh, yeah, we are also back below 100 megabytes, but uh, Apple also uh, up, uh, approve apps above, or like you can download apps above 150 now, or sorry, about 100. Uh, the new limit is 150. Um, I think we're at 77, so that, that's really nice. We're working hard to get that down below 100, even though it's, it felt so sad, like you've been like, uh, uh, playing around with your assets, like really optimizing space, and then you do like, yeah, let's do TensorFlow, let's put in extra, I don't know, uh, 50 megabytes of uh, library. Um, and yeah, we actually have two models. We have one uh, hosted on the cloud, uh, and we have one that we ship with the app. Um, so a few tips before you, uh, before you get to start with this, your own, or where you, uh, before you get to do this. Um, Keep the hardcore mode in Xcode on. Uh, 
TensorFlow comes with a lot of warnings if you are very, uh, if you have like strict settings. Um, but you can turn this on uh, or like turn those off for TensorFlow and keep them for your product. Um, this was new to me, but you can, if there's some game developers here or someone who worked with the uh, big files before, uh, you can memory map the model. So it loads the, uh, the big file in memory. Because um, uh, otherwise you get, uh, it loads everything at once otherwise, and it, it can create a, a crash even on like uh, newer devices. Um, uh, and yeah, last one. Uh, if you uh, bundle your app with a model, uh, it can actu actually be extracted from, from, the, from the app. So keep that in mind. Uh, but you also, you don't want to send off too many sensitive pictures uh, of your image or of your users, or if you're analyzing voice, for instance, uh, don't send that to a, to a server. Uh, so that could also be sensitive, but keep that in mind. Um, thank you. So, yeah, so we won't be seeing a demo of... Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I have any like good pictures. Uh, oh, oh, someone have prepared. Uh, so let's see. I swear I want to look at my pictures first. So this is, uh, yeah, uh, our app. Um, oh, uh, but those are screenshots. Uh, pretty accurate. Uh, yep. I can confirm that's, uh, that's correct. I don't know about the previous one. Uh, you really don't have to know about fish at uh, Fish Brain. Uh, you get to learn a lot about fish and fishing and fish pieces. Um, yeah, we actually name our, all our services after uh, Latin names, uh, species names, and also uh, famous fishes like Nemo. Um, yeah. So uh, you mentioned that you have two models, one, one running on the server and one uh, bundled with the app. So what's your, like, your, uh, like, how do you make sure that you, so I would suppose that you're the one that on the server is constantly being trained. Uh, no. So uh, um, the thing, the, like, the way we do this is, um, uh, so the one on the server is actually the one is doing the uh, species recognition. And we have one on the device that is doing um, fish recognition. So it's identifying if there's a fish or not. Uh, so it's, it's a much simpler, less... Uh, uh, so you still like, send that data over to the server and then you get back the, the, the response, like, yeah. which, which, kind of, which kind of fish it is. Yeah. Yeah. So locally you kind of do like hot dog or not hot dog. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, this process, they beat us with like a week or two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you haven't read that uh, blog post on Medium, you should do it. It's really, it's really funny. They, co they cover more implementation. Uh, I, I, just, I just have to hijack them with a follow-up question. Uh, which kind of like strange, funny items has, has your model thought of being a fish? So, but the thing is, we, uh, as, I mean, we trained our own. Oh, sorry, like, uh, but then it's us trying, right? Mm. Or, or how do you mean? Like, but then we have to put out so the model is trained only for fish. It can only save fish, because uh, that's what it knows about. Uh, but we can, yeah, yeah, but if you give it a, yeah, it's uh, most likely going to say it's not a fish, or it doesn't know, or it's a very low probability that it's a, a, it's a fish. Um, and at first, we set the uh, benchmark at like 20. If it was like below 20%, we didn't even show our result. Then it was like, we can't identify this. Because uh, it's gonna, most likely going to give you a result. But it's probably going to be very, like a low prior, uh, probability. Any more questions? Nope. I'll be uh, by the beer if you have any. Uh, if you've done something, I would love to hear about it. Uh, I think this is a really, yeah. OK, we have a question here. Um, how fast is the recognition on the device, fish or not fish? Uh, oh, so we have, like, the latest model is, uh, uh, it's actually really fast. Uh, it goes through, so our previous one did seven images in like 
one and a half second, I think. Uh, now we do 100 images in a second, I think. So uh, I don't really have the benchmark numbers, but it's really fast, the latest one. Sounds really cool. Can't wait to try it out. <laughs> I'll be back with the iCore ML uh, presentation. Yeah. All right, so let's give it up for Emil.